Hi, I'm Dawn Cavanaugh, APQS National Education Director. Today we're going to learn how to attach binding with your long arm. I know it's surprising, but you can do that and make it a very quick, efficient way to get some of your projects done. Now, I wouldn't necessarily steer you towards this project if you're doing something that requires a lot more precision or detail, but for those quills that you just want to get done in a hurry and it's not quite so important that everything be perfectly square, this is a great way to cut some corners and, and make it efficient. There are some tools that you're going to need to have on hand to make this as easy as possible. First, you're going to want an extended base. That allows me to use a ruler to help keep my binding straight as I'm aligning it on the edge of the quilt. Of course, you're going to need the binding strips. I personally prefer to cut my strips at about two and a half inches wide and then fold them and press them. And you're going to need to find the center of that binding strip. So, of course, measure the perimeter of your quilt I'm one of those who prefers to have plenty extra, so I've added about two, uh, 24 extra inches to the binding, so when I get to the other end, I'll have plenty for overlap. You've got the binding cut about 24 inches longer than the perimeter of your quilt. Fold it in half along the length and find the center, as I've done here, and I've marked it with a pin. You'll also want to have on hand a ruler something that's going to allow you to best guess that straight line as you're quilting and making sure that the edge of the border is staying straight, the binding rather. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the channel locks on my APQS Millennium to stitch a nice straight reference line that I can keep that binding up next to. It'll be the same principle as using a rotary cutter to trim that off. So let me refocus the camera and show you how that's going to work. Well, I have positioned the needle at the upper left corner of my quilt because I'm going to use the APQS channel locks to do that. I prefer to stitch a long horizontal line atop, across the top of the quilt first and then come back and stitch lines down the sides of my quilt. It helps me to square it up a little better. Of course, you could always start on the side of your quilt, quilt up across the top and quilt down again. There's obviously a lot more different ways to accomplish this task. Just want to give you some idea of how to do it. So I'm going to refocus the camera on the channel lock that I have. When I push this button on the APQS Millennium, it allows me to lock the directions. So it'll only go left and right. That activates channel lock. And now I'm actually ready to go. I've aligned my needle slightly inside the outer edge of my quilt because, to be honest, I didn't piece it as well as I probably could have. And this will help give me a nice straight line for that binding. I've repositioned the needle at the opposite end of the quilt, and now I'll quilt with my channel lock all the way down. As you can see, I've added a couple of pins along my pathway holding my binding in place. That just makes me feel a little extra secure. The very last pin I have aligned with the reference stitching that I have done along the side of my quilt. I use the channel lock to stitch down the edge. Notice that I've placed the pin in line with that. That's going to give me a target to shoot for. So as I come across, I'll stop with my hopping foot next to that particular pin. I'm going to come back to the center and I'm going to put my channel lock on and quilt all the way over to my left. If you don't happen to have a machine with a vertical and horizontal electronic channel lock, you can use a ruler and your base to help stabilize as you quilt. Make sure it has reference lines on it to help you position it along your binding. Let's get started. Here we go, I'll put the channel lock on and stitch. I've 
stopped with my needle down so that I can keep my place. I'll pull my reference pin out of the way. Now, just as you would normal machine binding, I'll raise the, raise the needle and lift it out of the way so that I can fold the corner appropriately. I am going to back stitch slightly to give that corner extra stability. Now I can move the machine out of my way slightly. And just like normal binding, I will fold this corner up until I have a right angle and then fold that down again. Now it appears I may have stitched a little bit farther than my reference point if that's happened. Certainly you can use a scissors or a small seam ripper to release one or two stitches to allow you to fold that back correctly. I'll fold it up, make sure I get my hand out of the way, and then down, keeping your top fold along the edge of the binding. So I will continue aligning it, sewing down with my vertical channel lock all the way. Then I'll repeat the process on the opposite side of the quilt. I've sewed all the way to the right of my quilt, again stopped where my pin is in line with the actual reference point I stitched down on the side. That's about a quarter of an inch from the edge of my foot to the needle. Now I can raise the needle up out of the fabric and take the channel lock off, move the machine out of the way, and again just like normal binding procedure for mitered corners, I'll flip that up and align the raw edge of my binding with the reference line that I've stitched with the channel lock down the side of my quilt. I personally use finger pressing a lot. Finger press that. Bring this piece back down until the top edge of the fold is in line with the top edge of the binding. There we go. And then we will continue sewing straight down the side. I'll drop my needle to keep my place. Then I am going to use a pin or two to help it as I'm aligning everything. Well, now that I have started and made it to both the left edge of the quilt and the right edge and actually done the corner folding the way you would traditionally do a mitered binding, I'll continue down both sides of the quilt. I like to use the channel locks to help keep me on target as I go. So the first thing I'll do will be to stitch a reference line, continuing the one on each side that I have done. Then I'll go back and finish by holding the binding in place with a couple of pins, engaging those channel locks again, and stitching down to the bottom. When I reach the bottom of the quilt, the same process will happen across the bottom. The first thing I'll do will be to stitch a reference line across the entire bottom of the quilt. I'll come down and fold my corners when I get there, and then stop shortly in the middle so that I can complete this actual binding on my home sewing machine. Now, you can certainly fold the edges and tuck them inside if you prefer to do that for an extremely fast, quick way to finish this quilt so that all that would be left would be to flip the quilt or the binding rather to the back and stitch it down. I personally prefer to miter those up like I've done everything else to make it just a little bit uh, more finished and have a little more professional look. That's it. It's easy to add binding on a long arm. I have secured my starting stitches here with my foot aligned with the left edge or raw edge of my binding and the binding in line with the reference stitching that I have done with my APQS channel lock. I'll turn that vertical channel lock again and then start quilting. I've advanced the quilt and now need to continue my reference line along the edge of the quilt. Then I'll go back and resume stitching the binding down right next to that.
personally like to hold it in place with a couple of pins, but I have to be aware that the fabric may walk just a little bit as I go. Another quick hint, if your batting is, and backing are very close as mine are here, you can use a pin and secure that pin and the other end of your clamp right through those two pieces so there's nothing to get in the way of that as you travel along. So I'll undo my channel lock, align it again with my previous stitching, and get my hand out of the way so you can see I've got lots of thread tails that I should be clipping. Secure my beginning and ending tails again. Engage the channel lock and stitch. This was just a quick quilt that I threw together kind of in the modern style so that I'm not quite so worried about everything lining up across the bottom. But you're not going to have that luxury if you've taken the time to actually do piecing and you've got just a quarter inch seam to worry about as you do all of this binding. So keep that in mind that while long arm binding is certainly a quick way to get the binding attached, it's not always a guarantee that you'll be able to keep all of those points from getting cut off or even necessarily to prevent the fabric from rippling. It's important to remember that right now my quilt is still stretched out on the frame. So if I apply the binding, I want to make sure that I'm not overstretching the binding or the quilt. In fact, attaching binding this way may not be the best choice if you've done a design where the border design of your quilt has not actually left the edge of the quilt. In other words, the pantograph quilting I've done has spilled off all of the four edges of this quilt, so the edges have also got some stabilizing stitches. But if I had done a feather design that wandered up a border and I try to attach the binding now while it's stretched out on my frame, I might be disappointed when I take it off since this is stretched now. And when the quilt relaxes with that feather quilting in the border, the very edges are going to want to relax too. And I don't want to add the binding now or it could end up causing a, a very much patriotic quilt that's going to wave and salute me by the time it's off the frame. So I'm going to finish up doing the two corners at the bottom and then we'll join them up at the bottom. I have finished with my stitching along the edge with my channel lock for my reference point and then I continued all the way across the bottom of my quilt to the other side and then up the other edge. Now you can see my piecing here where I wasn't concerned about my modern quilt being exactly perfect. Here I had different pieces of different lengths and I was perfectly fine with determining that the edge of my quilt was here. Of course, you'll want to pay much more attention to that line when you have pieced blocks that you're trying to make sure that you don't cut off with this binding technique. So the next step is to finish sewing the binding all the way down to the corner as we've done before. We will then do the same thing we've done, flipping it at a 45 degree angle across this fold, which actually is a 90 degree fold, back again, and then we'll complete stitching and I'll stop in the middle of the quilt. I'll come from the other side of the quilt to the pieces that where they join together and we'll marry those two in the middle. Let's see how that looks. stopping point is right here. I'll align that and remember if you're not comfortable or not sure of where to stop, add a pin right at that point. You may even be okay just by folding it back right along the stitching line and giving it a good crease so that you know where your hopping foot needs to stop before you finish that up. So I'll engage the channel lock now and we'll keep quilting.
pull this back. Looks like I went one stitch too many. I'll release that single stitch for me. I'll fold it back. I want my raw edge in line with the basting edge along the bottom. I want those to be nice and straight. Finger press my angle. Bring the fold back. Make sure I've got it at a nice fold right where those two edges meet. The fold of my binding and the raw edge of the first line of binding. So I will engage my channel locks and continue stitching over towards the center. But I'll stop just a little shy and come the other direction from the other side. As I earlier mentioned, I like to leave lots of extra binding on the joining pieces so that I can decide if I want to do that a traditional way with a mitered binding corner or join on my home sewing machine. Uh, today, to make this really a truly fast and efficient way to do that, we're going to tuck one of those binding strips inside the other and simply then lap them together as we sew. So I'll need to trim those up a little bit. You can see that here's where I stopped stitching on the previous line. And I want to make sure that I've obviously got plenty to go. I use my scissors and trim this off. Now since this is supposed to be quick, I am actually okay using my hands to make a quick fold right here. I'm going to fold that binding back into the inside or wrong edges. That's going to create a nice tuck. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can hopefully see that just a little better. There we go. That's what it's going to look like folded over. So I'm going to extend the other piece of binding inside that I'll zoom out a little bit more so that you can see. We'll tuck this strip in. I'll trim it down. I've got a little extra. And then we'll complete by sewing right over the top. Take my pin out of the way. I do have the channel lock on. And there we go. Joined up at the end. Now you know, it's actually very easy and fun to attach your binding with a long arm. And an APQS Millennium makes it super simple to do with those channel locks in both directions. Touch of a button and away we go. For more information about APQS quilting machines, visit us at www.apqs.com. Or be sure to visit us and like us on our Facebook page and join us in the conversation. We'd love to hear what you're up to with your quilting.